Let's fill out an ESPN second chance bracket. Welcome back to the Green Beans Go channel. It's your host, me, and I have had a very busy Thursday to Monday, 4.04 p.m. Uh, we celebrated my daughter's birthday this weekend. Of course, all the basketball games were on. My wife is now on spring break, so she's home. We're getting our shower redone uh, downstairs. It's the only shower we have at home. So if you can't tell, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I am unhygienic right now. So I apologize. My content game has been absolutely slacking. Uh, probably the biggest layoff that I've had since I've started doing this a little bit more seriously. So I apologize for that. If you're someone who routinely comes by and checks out my content, and if you are, as always, I do appreciate you very much. And this video is for you because today we're going to fill out a second chance bracket. ESPN offers this in addition to their ongoing tournament challenge. They have one that takes... Um, uh, an, an origin at the Sweet 16, and you can play it out to the very end. So that's what we're going to do today. No research, just fill this out based on what I've seen so far in this tournament, and uh, we'll see what we come up with. So we'll start here in the East with UConn, San Diego State, Illinois, and Iowa State, a pretty chalky, chalky, chalky region so far. And San Diego State had quite a scare in their first game. Um, and last night they played uh, late against Yale, and I was worried about them. And I woke up this morning about 2 a.m. actually and checked uh, when I woke up in the middle of the night, and I saw they kind of obliterated Yale. So uh, I don't know what to expect with this team. I think they will need every bit of this week to plan for UConn, who I believe is still the strongest team in this tournament. So I'm not going to think about it too much. I'm going to say it was a good run for San Diego State. This is a team that went to the finals last last year and faced UConn. So I think that'll be a big storyline this week. The people will be talking about this game based on the fact that this is a rematch of last year's championship. Obviously, that that is it's harder to win uh, two in a row, right? It's it's sometimes easier for the underdog to come in and get it done in, in rematches. So we'll see what San Diego State can do, but I'll take UConn in this battle. Illinois and Iowa State, I was a little surprised. Illinois is actually the underdog in this game. And I realized that Iowa State beat Houston um, at the end of the regular season or the conference tournament to get uh, into the. I mean, they were already into the tournament, but you know, leading into the tournament. And I think that is is something that we, as maybe sports betters, are paying a premium for. And I think Iowa State's strong, but they showed a little more weakness in their uh, round of 32 matchup, and even times against Moorhead State or. Uh, not Morehead State, sorry, that's who Illinois played, against um, the Jackrabbits, San Jose State or San Diego State, uh, San Jose State. Uh, they looked suspect in some spots. Now, it was never close, right? It was never out of hand, but I'm not sold on the Iowa State Cyclones. In fact, I'm going to take Illinois here. I think they are one of the hotter teams, and these are two of the hottest teams, but they are one of the hotter teams and I think that they will get the job done against the Cyclones, and they will face UConn in the Elite Eight, and we'll move down to the West. We'll come back to that. Uh, the West features a 1-4-2-6. North Carolina plays Alabama, and Clemson plays Arizona. Clemson is one of the bigger shocks to me, if not, if not the biggest shock on this whole list. Part of me is less surprised that NC State is here than Clemson. NC State made a run at the end of the year and gained momentum going to this tournament, whereas Clemson had lost like 10 of their last 20 or something. So really shocked to see them here. And these two games, I think, will be very good, uh, competitive games. I'm worried about North Carolina. The advantage they have in this game is the fact that their defense is very strong and Alabama's defense is not. And so if you're someone who says defense wins championships, you believe in the D, I would go with North Carolina in this one. Uh, but Alabama is rolling right now. And I mean really, truly rolling. Um, they did, again, they were pushed to the brink by Grand Canyon. It was a very close game. Five, six minutes left. It was a one-possession game. And then Alabama ran with, away with it at the end. Grand Canyon could not hit a lot of free throws. So that ended up costing them... Um, I'm worried for North Carolina in the longevity of this tournament, even though they only have three, four games left, because we saw with Michigan State, they were able to battle 
back. Uh, they went on a 20 to one run in that game after they were down something like 14 or 15. But I'm worried that they go as RJ Davis goes, kind of like Purdue goes as Zach Eady goes. And if they can't pick up other pieces, if other guys aren't hitting shots, now we saw Harrison Ingram hit shots for them uh, in that game with Michigan State, which helped. Um, but if Baycott's having a quiet game and, and RJ Davis can't find it, this team's going to struggle. So I am going to take them over the Crimson Tide just because I think it will be a offense-defense situation where UNC will slow down Alabama, but Alabama won't be able to slow down UNC. So give me the Tar Heels in that one. And this one is tough, uh, but I think I have to go with Arizona. They I didn't get to watch any of the Dayton-Arizona game, but I saw it was about a 10-point game most of the way. And uh, Arizona's first game was a complete blowout. Um, their 15-2 matchup was a complete blowout. I think that, um, you know, if, if you want to buy into things are rigged, which I don't, uh, but the storyline of Caleb Love's rematch with his former team in UNC, it's the storyline. Um, now, of course, you could have the ACC storyline of Clemson versus North Carolina. I don't think that's as enticing to the viewer, to the talking heads. So... We'll go with this matchup. I know it's chalky. I know it's a one-two, but we're going to ride with it for the storyline. Heading up over to the South region, make sure you guys can see it. Houston, Duke, NC State, and Marquette. Surprise. If I'm looking at this, again, I, I know I should be shocked that there's an 11 seed sitting here, but I'm more shocked that Duke has turned it around. Um, they look they looked good against Vermont. And they looked great, great against James Madison. Uh, Jared McCain hit eight or nine three-pointers in that game. And I, I just, I mean, yeah, good for Duke. Hate them. Uh, don't care for them at all, but uh, they, they're doing it. Uh, but I don't know if it's going to be enough to overcome Houston. And people have all been worried about Houston's offense. Can they score? And they scored 100 points on Texas A&M. And I think that's a huge boost going into a game where they have a few days off. They can study this Duke team. And I know Roach is a player, I know Filipowski's a player, and I know McCain's a player. But I think the, the Duke does not have a ton of depth. And I think if Houston can put themselves in a chess match and can kind of limit the scoring of those three bigs, three big guys, uh, not bigs, but three big guys, I think they set themselves up well. And I think that Houston ends up getting it done against Duke. This one, uh, NC State Marquette is, uh, um, I don't know. I don't know. NC State is is the Cinderella this year. I mean, they have to be. I mean, whether you like it or not, um, it's the Cinderella. Every other potential Cinderella lost their uh, round of 32 matchup. NC State Marquette. I have to go with Marquette because I believe Shaka Smart and, again, We'll talk about just just top to bottom, point guard to center. Marquette is deeper. Marquette is more skilled. Mar Marquette has more players. And I think this break, the this four-day break, is going to benefit teams that have better players. Um, when, you, when you have these quick turnarounds, sometimes that's when you can catch teams off guard. Um, but I'm going to lean chalk here and say that NC State has played great. Um, their big man... Uh, has been dominating. Uh, their guard play has been has been fantastic. Now their matchups have been relatively easy. So this will be a much larger test than they've seen so far this tournament, and I think it will um, be too much of a test. And Marquette will get it done. Last region is the Midwest: Purdue, Gonzaga, Creighton, and Tennessee. Another chalky region. One five, three two. This, it's weird because this tournament has been so good in terms of the quality of games that we have gotten to watch but the results have been very standard um which i'm okay with i would rather at least if, if we're going to get chalk all the way throughout the bracket i would rather at least it be competitive to the end and a lot of these games happen so i i, I I'm, I'm not trying to dog on this tournament it's it's been it's been entertaining purdue and gonzaga um i don't care for purdue i don't care for zach Eady. um uh, call me a hater. I just, I, I don't, I don't, I don't trust it yet, right? Uh, I don't know if they've proved it yet. Last game against Utah State, 11-point favorites. I thought that was too many. 
uh, for what Purdue has done in previous tournaments, and they win, win by 40 or something ridiculous. And that game, Zach Eady had 21 at half and ended with like 23. So um, other people were picking it up, and I think that's when I have to start respecting Purdue. My, f- my Now I fear with this team because I'm not a fan. I don't care if they do well. But I, I think my fear with this team is they go as Zach Eady goes, as I mentioned with North Carolina, with R.J. Davis, but it is it's more drastic. Um, if Zach Eady's in foul trouble, if he has any bad game, sometimes people look around like, whoa, whoa, who, who, whose turn is it, right? Because that's who they rely on. And when he is on and when he is playing well and when teams can't defend him, he's unstoppable. But can, can Zach stop him? And I think they have the talent, the depth, the size to make it more difficult than it has been in weeks past. Gonzaga was in a tight game at halftime with Kansas, 41-40 to or something. I think Kansas was even up. And then Gonzaga blew the doors off of them in the second half. I don't think they're going to be able to do that with Purdue. And again, this is a home game for Purdue. Um, If you watched any of the Purdue games. It was it was being played in Indianapolis. It was a it was a it was a crowd full of boilermakers. And when you have a Midwest game being played um that far away from Washington, where Gonzaga is, let's see if okay, so this will be played in Detroit. So it's not going to be as homey as it has been for them playing at Lucas Oil, but I still think they will travel more than will the Gonzaga Bulldog fans. I'm gonna take Purdue. I hate doing it. I won't be shocked if I look back in a week and I say, "Mm, you know, they didn't get it done. But I'll take Purdue um, because I just think that the confidence that the other players on the team are gaining um, on this run is going to be what propels them. So give me the Boilermakers to make it to the Elite Eight. Creighton and Tennessee is one that I'm not going to speak too long on because I haven't watched a ton of Tennessee games, um, at least in this tournament. I watched a little bit of the Texas game, and I saw that they were slowing down in the second half. And I was shocked to see that Creighton is the underdog on this one. I thought it would be closer to a pick but Creighton is something like a three-point, two-and-a-half-point underdog. So that does shock me, and I think that does have a little bit of value. Yes, I know Creighton was pushed to the brink. In fact, pushed to double overtime against the Oregon Ducks. But I think Oregon was a really strong team in this tournament and at the end of this year. So I'm actually going to pick Creighton here because I do think that they will take a deep breath. They will go in, they will assess, and they will have what it takes to stop Dalton Connect and the Tennessee Volunteers. So that is who I will take on the Midwest side of things. And again, my final four is just chalk after chalk after chalk, but that's all I got to work with. Hopping back over here, I'm excited if we get this matchup, UConn and Illinois, because I think it will be fantastic. I think UConn will come in as probably a six to seven point favorite, but I think Illinois will be able to handle them. This is a team that was able to handle Purdue in the Big Ten tournament, and I think that gives you a lot of confidence and then they, you know, they've continued the run. And if we assume that they're here, they handled Iowa State, who handled Houston. I mean, this is a team that's going to have the most confidence of any team, probably besides UConn in this tournament. So if we get this matchup, it, it will be awesome. But will it be awesome enough for Illinois to overcome UConn? I don't know. Um, I, I, I hate, and we don't know where it will be played, I hate to pick against the Huskies. I do think they're vulnerable. And I do think they, there are pieces out there that can beat them. And I think Illinois possesses those pieces. So it makes me nervous, but I'm going to play it safe here. No, I'm not. I'm going to go Illinois. You know what? It's my video. Okay? This is my, this is my video. We're going Illinois over UConn to the Final Four. Let's do it. Down here, yikes. I mean, if, if this is in... Where will this game be? I'm worried because it's the West region. The Final Four is in Glendale. I'm worried that this will be a home game for Arizona. But, but, Arizona's, this is the same, I I think this is a similar matchup with Alabama. It's a team that doesn't play the best defense and scores a lot of points, and that's how they win games. And I think on a two-day turnaround, it will be easier for North Carolina to turn around and play Arizona, a similar-ish style to Alabama, than it will be for Arizona to turn around and play North Carolina. So for that reason, I will take 
the Tar Heels over the Wildcats. Moving up here, Houston and Marquette. I think a lot of teams have slept on Marquette, and a lot of teams are worried about them because we see them lose at the end of the year, but they're losing to UConn. So I think that their market price was a little lower than it should have been. But in this game, I don't know. Um, however, I'm going to go with Marquette. I'm going to go with Marquette here. I think their defense will be enough to excuse me, slow down Houston, but their offense will be enough to um, overcome Houston's fantastic defense. And plus, I'm not going to put another one seed in the Final Four. So too much chalk already. Let's go with Marquette, Golden Eagles, and finally Purdue and Creighton. This is the team that is that is situated, poised, built, constructed, erected to beat Zach Eady. All right, two very, very large big men on this team um, that I think will give Edie trouble. And I think in a game of this magnitude, if Edie is struggling, the rest of the team will lose confidence. So give me Creighton Blue Jays over the Purdue Boilermakers to the Final Four. For your Final Four matchup in Glendale, Arizona, we have the Fighting Illini and the Tar Heels against the Eagles and the Blue Jays. Again, two great games. This game, I mean, two great defenses and two great. I mean, this is what I would love to say. I would love. I would love it. I would love it. The ratings would be through the roof. Um, and I'm going to take North Carolina in this one over Illinois, and I'm going to take Creighton in this one over Marquette. Teams that are both from the same conference. This would be a highly talked about matchup. I don't know the head to head. Uh, I bet I could find it in here. Um, okay, so. Marquette beat Creighton in December, lost to Creighton in March by a lot, by 14. Um, and that's the only two times that they've played, it seems. Uh, yeah. So uh, uh, this would be the rubber match, if, if that is correct. Um, and again, I give, I give the advantage to Creighton. And plus, I think Creighton has a better chance to get here than Marquette technically does. So we'll play it a little bit safer and go Creighton. So my final matchup is North Carolina against Creighton. And I have got to go with North Carolina as my winner with a total of about 151. Um, I, I, I think Creighton could uh, beat North Carolina. I absolutely do. Um, but I think their path is a little bit more difficult, so we're playing it safe there. And I've loved Carolina since Tyler Hansborough and Ty Lawson were getting it done for them uh, back in the day. So that is my second chance bracket. I know it's not flashy, but I worked with what I had to work with, and um, I am sitting in like 87th out of 88th in in my Green Means Go group. That's embarrassing. Um so yeah, uh, I'm not going to join a group for this. I'm not even going to make a group because I don't want to be embarrassed uh, more than I already have been. So let me know in the comments your final four, who you're taking to the final four, what your picks are, and we will see you on the next video.